to life. The combination of the reputation that Absolute Obsidian had built through a number of excellent releases, as well as the promise that Pillars of Eternity would be a spiritual successor to the Black Isle RPGs of old, such as Baldur's Gate, Planescape Torment, and Icewind Dale, made sure that this Kickstarter got a hell of a lot of attention. With that attention, of course, comes higher expectations, especially considering the budget of this title, and Pillars of Eternity was able to deliver. To me, Pillars of Eternity represents exactly what I would expect from a modernized version of Black Isle's RPGs of old. It is a classic CRPG brought up to date with a solid and light title that really put a focus on the in-game lore as well as storytelling, whereas previous roguelite experiences had more of a focus on replayability and game mechanics. Sunless Sea is about as far away from the Isaacs and nuclear thrones of the genre as you could possibly imagine. It's a game set in a world of incredible mystery with a relatively slow pace to the point where some people actually found you replicate conventionally. That's not to say that there aren't RPGs that offer huge amounts of content, but it's the way that they offer that content which is fundamentally different to Pillars of Eternity. Titles such as Witcher 3 and of course last year's Dragon Age Inquisition are appealing to a larger audience and have more relatable game mechanics and a focus of course on high-tech graphical fidelity. They are extremely expensive games to make, and while they're good RPGs in their own right, Pillars of Eternity was created at a fraction of that budget and a focus on the CRPG elements of the quality and attention to detail is really quite astonishing. This is an example of an indie studio that, frankly, with a fairly small budget, managed to make something that looks genuinely striking in many ways. Due to its small scale, it may not be as technically impressive as some of the other titles on this list, but it's pretty damn hard to argue that despite its humble origins, Soma really does look the part. The best graphics can be defined in, in certain objective ways. You can talk about the game that has the highest texture resolution. You can talk about the game that can render the most things at once on screen without falling over itself. You can talk about the various pieces of technology that a game is able to take advantage of, but let's be honest what the game was a flashy but poorly performing horror title it turns out that really only one of those things is true yeah it runs like arse but it's less of a horror game and more of a choose your own adventure something of an interactive movie i guess you could argue but a title that really embraced the idea of the chaos effect, small decisions having big impact later on, and I am an absolute sucker for that sort of thing when it's well implemented. The game is not necessarily scary, creepy, atmospheric certainly, but not scary, more of an homage to 90s slasher films than anything else. But I found myself surprisingly engaged by it, plenty of tense moments and interesting decisions to make as I decided who I really, really hated in this group of people and who I only found mildly annoying. One of my guilty pleasures is David Cage games and this to me seems like the logical evolution with quite a few of the holes filled in when it comes to the David Cage concept of the kind of interactive choose-your-own-adventure movie video game thingy. Rainbow Six Siege I love Rainbow Six, or at least I did. I loved Rainbow Six until Rainbow Six Vegas, which to me completely defeated the point of the exercise. Taking that tense, slow-paced tactical shooter, I mean, THE tactical shooter, and turning it into a cover-based squad of three nonsense with pretty much all of the planning removed in favor of the flashing console nonsense. Wasn't exactly holding out a lot of hope for Rainbow Six Siege. As a result of that, Ubisoft in 2014 had done an incredibly poor job of keeping me interested in their franchises. And this did seem to be picking up the carcass of another once great series. I'm very glad to be wrong. Despite the fact that this is a multiplayer only game at full price, which is certainly putting quite a lot of people off, there is a surprising amount of well implemented innovation in this game. 
Rainbow Six Siege has a number of new ideas that are all well implemented to create a very tense, tactical and team oriented experience. In fact, it's one of the few games in which I can actually tolerate dying and then having to sit out for the round because it's surprisingly fun and tense to watch the rest of your team as they try and desperately struggle to win the game. Ubisoft as a publisher is branded and I would say that this is mostly fair and self-inflicted as a company that recycles systems, ideas, and mechanics ad rules. There is a reason that there are jokes about radio towers whenever a new Ubisoft game is announced. There is a reason why I can't name all of the Assassin's Creed titles because there are two bloody...